Let's take a look at an old CRT monitor. There's a little bit of distortion on this because the conveyor is slipping. You can see um, the tube comes out as black. That's because there's quite a lot of lead in the glasses they use on CRTs to um, shield it from the internal electrodes. Um, so unfortunately we've got all these horrible lines on there, but we can still see some of the details of the components. Um, so that's probably the, flight, the main line output transformer. You can see all the components on the PCB and the edge of the shielding quite nicely. And a power drill. There's quite a lot of detail there. If we can line it up a bit, we can see the motor, the gearbox, wiring in the handle, it's got speed control in it. This is a switch mode power supply that's completely potted in an aluminium extrusion, so you um, can't normally see what's inside it. So here we can see there's the main transformer, there's some more inductors here that'll probably be for the power factor correction. You can clearly see the uh, the cores inside the wire as they twist around. So it looks like there's a maybe a toroidal induct, couple of toroidal inductors there. That's some of the other components on the PCB. Here's an example of this organic and inorganic detection. Um, what I've scanned here is a large can that's got some um, epoxy resin in it. Uh, if we hit the organic strip button, you can see that the contents change quite dramatically, whereas the can changes hardly at all, sort of indicating that these contents are organic. If I press the inorganic strip, that, that sort of makes the can disappear, but the contents say pretty much the same, so you can actually discriminate different types of materials. And obviously um, some of the things that you'd be looking for, like explosives, tend to be organic. So it can sort of discriminate whether it sees something that it thinks warrants um, further investigation. Here's a slightly more uh, dramatic example. What I've put through this is um, a bag of sugar and a plastic container of salt. Now you can see on the standard image they just sort of come out as grey blobs. But if you look at the, um, the pseudo colour image, if I press the organic strip, the sugar and also the plastic container are highlighted very clearly because the plastic's organic, so is the sugar, and the inorganic again it shows very clearly that the, um, the salt is the uh, inorganic material, so you get very clear discrimination um, based on sort of the chemical composition and the different characteristic, yeah, x ray char characteristics of those um, compounds, which is quite impressive. Alright, this is a scan of uh, my laptop. You can see some quite clear features. You've got the uh, the fan and the heat pipes here. You've got, um, I think that's either the speaker or it might be the memory backup battery. You've got sort of the main battery visible here. Oh, actually, no, it's not the battery. Um, the, those are the battery cells here. I think that might be the. There's a solid state drive on it. That's maybe the metal can around the solid state drive. It, the shape's slightly distorted because obviously, because of the way the shape of the beam, you do get some geometric distortions based on which way around objects are placed in there and um, whereabouts on the belt they are. Because um, you've got like the fan beam going to the, um, the sort of detectors around the top and um, back. Now, one of the problems I found with having this, sort of deciding things to look at x-ray, is that almost everything I own I've already taken apart so I know what's inside it. Um, but let's take a look at this flight recorder. You see this is all sort of coming out fairly dark because of course there's a lot, a lot of um, metal in there, but we can uh, line it up to highlight some details. Uh, that's just pressing the high pen button, sort of high penetration. Um, the only thing we're seeing here is th things like the um, the edge of the tape assembly, where it's going through quite a, a large thickness of um, metal. So we've got the you know, the tape assembly, we've got the transformers in the power supply, and obviously the uh, the PCBs there, and you actually see the uh, the tape heads. Take a look at a few other smaller bits and pieces. Um, here we've got this uh, large RFID reader which is potted. That's, um, over here that's a smaller, again, potted RFID module. There's a big hybrid HD converter. 
um, a small opposite RFID reader and a couple of uh, credit cards and a transportation card that have got uh, RFID tags built in. Right, so this is that easily converted, so you can see the pins here and sort of various bits of circuitry on the substrate there. Um, this is that large RFID module and you can clearly see the coil wrapped around the outside and the various bits of circuitry inside it. Um, that's that small module, you, you can see there's, um, they do two versions of this, there's a small and large version, so it looks like the only difference is the coil size, because that inner bit of circuitry looks about the same size as the small module. Um, again, that's the medium sized reader, and you can see they're not using the whole area for the antenna coil, because I think they've got mounting holes there, but again you can very clearly see the coil there. Um, surprisingly you can hardly see anything at all on these cards. I think the amount of metal in them is so small that they, they don't really show up at all. You can't really see anything at all on those. Right, this is a video recorder and you can see we've got the head drum here. Um, that's probably a, a motor. I'm not quite sure what that is. That might be a maybe another motor. And we can see the, clearly see the power supply. We've got the main transformer in the power supply here and some of the other power supply components. Um, some, I think those are either, I think those are SCART connectors. There you can just see the metal pins of. And there's a vertical PCB on the right. If we look at the uh, colour display, you can see the, at the top we've got the front panel which is plastic and a few other bits which I think the, the dense parts, those are just an interaction between the two X-ray beams, but sort of the main organic part is the plastic front. See it's, it's going through the metal top. Right, I've got a collection of assorted high voltage potted things to look at. This is a laser power supply. Um, these are a couple of voltage multipliers for TV um, monitors and TVs. Um, this is the ballast and high voltage igniter for a um, high intensity discharge sort of car headlamp, um, car headlamp bulb thing. Um, this is the igniter unit from that big projector I pulled apart quite a long time ago. This is an inductor out of a um, defibrillator, a high voltage vacuum relay and a standard TV um, flyback transformer. So we'll see what these look like. Right, that's the um, main ballast from that HID lamp. And that is the high voltage unit. You can't really see much in that. It's a bit on the small side. Um, those are one of the, here's one of the voltage multipliers and you can see there's sort of some diodes in there and these will probably be capacitors as part of the multiplier. Um, this is that laser power supply so you can see there's um, one main transformer in there and it's probably a multiplier on the output of that. Um, this is that vacuum relay. Can you can just about see the wires coming in and the, uh, the contacts. Uh, that defibrillator coil doesn't look particularly interesting, it's probably just a sort of fairly large inductor. I can't really see any significant detail in that. This is the igniter from the projector. You can see a large coil, generally the way these work they've got a very large, yeah, heavy coil that the main uh, lamp can't go through and then um, it spark couples, a, you know, couples through a spark gap to the edge of that to produce a very high transient voltage that the inductance of the coil allows to um, to come out briefly. Um, can't see a great deal, and that might possibly be a spark gap there. I'm not totally sure. Um, there's some sort of probably some ferrite bits in there, but you can't really see very well on that, unfortunately. That's the TV flyback, um, and you can quite clearly see the um, sort of layered windings. You've got these sort of um, vertical sections here, and I think you see that there's that is probably one of the rectifier diodes in, the, in there. Here's another view of that uh, igniter and you can now actually see the individual turns of this main coil. It's still a little bit hard to make out what's going on and the rest of it though. And this is a battery pack from an old uh, laptop. You can sort of see the six cells but you can also actually see the cell orientation. You've got the opening at one end of the uh, cell. There's the contacts there and the PCB in there. 
there, this is a current clamp meter. Might be able to see some details of the current sensor in there. Is, uh, incidentally, this is just a big lump of steel that I've put in the plastic crate just to stop it slipping on the conveyor belt. You can see a fair amount of detail. You've got obviously the metal in the actual um, magnetic stuff in the jaws. There's a the sensor's probably in here somewhere. And that's just the spring below there. And you can see the battery in there and all the screws and the actual components and the four millimetre sockets there. Next on the conveyor belt we've got this little HP printer. Again most of it's a fairly small but obviously we've got the main metal carriage there. Can't really see much detail in there, that big lump there is going to be the uh, main motor. And this is the metal spring on there but nothing hugely exciting. And again on the um, colour display we can see that that's the inorganic which is obviously the main metal thing and that's organic which is the plastic housing. And this is a big um, car audio amplifier. You can see the big DC to DC coil there. Um, you can see the transistors and the output terminals and some of the internal wiring. Here's a couple of big um, RF mains filters. You can clearly see, it, clearly see that obviously there's the main ferrite choke inside, and this large one's got two uh, two big cornrod coils in there. Surprising amount of empty space in that big one, though. I think they may be uh, trying to make you think you're getting more for your money than you actually are. There's a lot of empty in that. And this is an old um, aluminium packaged helium neon laser tube. You can quite clearly see um, the internal structure here. Let's zoom in on here. So the internal electrode at the top, the central uh, glass ball. Let's see it at the end. Stuff inside aluminium seems to come out really nicely. You know, the x-ray seems to penetrate it quite well. You get still get a lot of detail of uh, what's inside stuff, whereas steel it takes a lot more to penetrate through steel. Also, it's the high penetration sensors that seems seem to be the ones that are most flaky on this thing, so it's hard to get decent images for anything. It has to go through the steel first because those sensors um, don't work very well. All right, here we've got some moulded connectors. These are just like the um IC connectors, 13 amp plug, and there's a three-way splitter on here. There's another another um, moulded lead. Let's see how they've should be able to see how they've done the wiring in these quite easily. And you can see in this splitter, there's just some joints. Not clear whether those are soldered or crimped. You can clearly, very clearly, see the um, individual cores within the wire. And you can just about see how those, you can see the fuse holder very clearly and then the uh, cores of the wire going into the plug there. Right, I seem to be rapidly running out of interesting things to x-ray so um, I think it's probably only about one more thing to try.